All right, everybody, welcome back to Jobber Bros. Here's Donnie Rude with Donnie Smokes. We are here to bring you our review of the 2023 WWE Royal Rumble pay per view or premium live event, rather. Um, was quite an interesting night with some really high highs and some pretty low lows. We're here to talk about it. He's about to pour some whiskey. Yes, I got sir. my my Bud Light currently in hand. Got my, and my little Scully guy. Yes, sir. No more beanie, I guess. I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, one of the dogs ate it or something. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Speaking of one of the dogs, you should see mine right there. Yep. My he looks so sweet now. I know what y'all are gonna say. Oh, he looks so sweet for now. <laughs> for now, I love that dog to death, but he's an asshole, just like his owner is. He uh, kills me. <laughs> comes with the territory. Yeah. Let's so. dive right into this shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cheers to that. So this was one of the better Royal Rumbles, in my opinion, in the past four years. Yeah, it was good. It was definitely a good rumble. Um, I'd say the best matches for me starting off would be the most of the men's Royal Rumble match and then the main event would probably be my two top top spots of the evening. Yeah. Um I'd say more so for me it was the women's Royal Rumble match. And we'll get to we'll get to why. But that was also a really fun match to watch. Like it's like I don't know. It's been the better ones for the women, the if not the best royal women's royal rumble match in the past couple of years because it's just I don't know. It felt more lively than it usually does to me. Rhea Ripley is Donnie's waifu. Oh yeah, that's why yeah, that is more. that is future <laughs> wife. Well, not only not only because of that, because something special happened during that, and we will get to that when we when we get there. All right. Well, let's let's get it rolling here. Uh, the men's Royal Rumble match. We're just going to start in order, kind of steamroll through the pay per view. Uh, I just want to briefly just give a round of applause to Gunther, man. That was fucking oh, shit, made dude. fucking absolute history. The man was the first in and the last out, like with, with the exception of the winner. Um, crazy performance by Gunther. He proved why he is called the ring general. He is truly a monster in the ring. He's making that intercontinental title go to places it's never been to before, if not, you know, for at least 10 years. Um, seriously, seriously awesome way to start it with, with Gunther and Sheamus because they, they have that long lasting slow boiling feud that's been going on for a couple months here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, I, I, that's was a great entrance. You want to touch on anything that that happened after? Well, I just wanted to touch on you know Gunther himself too, real quick. You know everything you said and you know more. And what the the cool thing was is that Cody Rhodes acknowledged that. I I watched the press conference. I'm not sure if you did. Um, sort of. Yeah, he he was like everything people say is true. He hits hard. He works with you really well. He is just an absolute special human being in that ring. And I think we see that on screen and now now more than ever. Like, you know, when I first saw Gunther a couple of years ago or whatever, I wasn't really the biggest fan of him. I guess when he was the UK champion, right? It was Walter. Uh, yeah, Walter. Um but uh yeah, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan, but then I got to see him in person and recently, you know, since he's come up to the main roster, I don't know, he's been very enjoyable to watch for me. Yeah. No, and it's uh, the room was filling up, like and then, you know, you know, Kofi came out, Gargano, the Miz, mm-hmm. and they were just, you know, going through Sheamus handling their own. Um and I did I can confirm because I know we were watching it. And you know how Gunther threw Kofi out of the ring. He kind of like landed on the chair, and went fucking flying. Yeah, the chair slid down. You know he was supposed to land on the chair and then make his way back in, but <laughs> he fucking ate shit on the chair. And that's actually the second last year's Rumble. A similar thing happened where his spot outside the ring got fucked up too. Um, so unfortunately, poor Kofi 
couldn't have his rumble moment the way he wanted it. But they, uh, sh- they should have just let him. <laughs> Nobody. Yeah, really you were like, oh, he has, he has one foot still in the chair. <laughs> like, it was still up on the chair, but I guess it must have hit the ground and then he threw it up there real quick. But uh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's one of my favorite moments in the Royal Rumble too, like that, because you know it's coming. You know it's gonna be so stupid that no human being should be able to do it. And and then he does. Yeah. You know. Well, eventually Lesnar came out and started cleaning house. You know, he tossed out quite a few people. I think Santos Escobar, Dawkins, Chad Gable. Um, but then, shortly following after him and his, his brief quick work he did, uh, Lashley came out. And Lashley fucked up Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. Brock was pissed, slamming shit, slamming the announce desk with a chair, or not chair, the freaking uh, steel steps. steps. <laughs> <laughs> he was outraged. He fucked up Baron Corbin as soon as he made his way down the entrance <laughs> ramp. That was <laughs> funny. Yeah. Um, and then he threw a ref, I think, outside of the ring, like he just, or <laughs> against the crowd. Like he was just all sorts of pissed. Um, but yeah. And then we we got Seth Rollins came in, he got Corbin out, um, mm-hmm. and then Rey Mysterio. I remember a lot of people online were bitching, saying like, "Oh, Rey Mysterio should have won technically, or he should have came out because uh, he never was thrown out." Oh God! But um, apparently he was hurt on set SmackDown the day before, so that's why they he was supposed to have a nice little spot fest with uh. Dominic to set up their match at WrestleMania, mm-hmm. but he got hurt on SmackDown. So then they reworked the story so that Dominic would come out with his his mask, indicating that he beat him up in, uh, backstage. Yeah. Um. So that was interesting. Interesting mm-hmm. development. Um, Booker T came. I don't give two fucks about him. Uh, good, good for him. Uh, he talked so, so much shit about AEW. Um, for no goddamn reason, but uh, Gunther fucked him up. Another, yep. Thank you, Gunther. Um, <laughs> and then, oh. yeah, I mean, we just keep chugging along here. You know, we're getting to around like number twenty-two spot. Damian Priest came out, and then you had all Judgment Day, with the exception of Rhea Ripley, in there mm-hmm. and just laying waste to everyone. They had you know three quarters of that faction in there. And then Edge comes in at number 24. Of course, he's out for blood against Judgment Day. Of course. He started uh, messing with them. Edge got Balor and Priest out. Um, And, yeah. So, eventually chugging along. We got the Logan Paul, number 29 spot. Holy shit. And, yeah, that, that crazy spot between him and Ricochet. Loved that. Like that was so science. awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're like, they, it was full on collision in midair, and you're just like, are, are they're they're dead. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, and then Cody Rhodes number thirty, and you know, I think didn't. Oh yeah, Logan Paul got out Seth Rollins, which that will be an interesting WrestleMania uh, match. I can imagine that happening um, mm-hmm. at Mania. Um, that would be that would be a crazy match. Yeah. Oh, and before that, Seth Rollins got Bobby Lashley out, so that was interesting too. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of history between you know Rollins and Lesnar. Bobby got out Lesnar, and Rollins got out Lashley. Uh, well, and so. there's been recent history between Rollins and Lashley with the whole United States Championship thing with Theory. They just had. At the last pay per view, they they just had a triple threat match where um and where Theory won. Yeah, yeah. Um, so cool developments with all of that, mm. and then you know eventually you know it just came down to Gunther and Cody having a, a great great little match at the end of all this with the last two in there, and. And Cody got the crossroads and got Gunther out. There's a lot of close calls for Cody. Gunther remained dominant and strong to the very end. But yeah. uh, Rhodes is going to WrestleMania. 
which Weird. he's the first Rhodes to go to WrestleMania as well, which I just learned over this weekend. Mm. Um, for I think first Rhodes to go for a championship match in WrestleMania, but I know for a fact he is also the first Rhodes to ever win a Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah, definitely first one ever win a Rumble. Um, you sure Dusty never was in a. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I said I, the the first comment I made about the WrestleMania one. Now I'm rethinking whether that was actually said or not. But it for sure, Rhodes, Cody Rhodes is the first Rhodes to win a Royal Rumble because they they mentioned that a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely, definitely. Um, but yeah, that'll be interesting to see, especially as we have other you know the developments that happened later in the in the in the night mm-hmm. um what goes on with this whole main event scene for for wrestlemania with cody uh what are your thoughts overall just on this whole entire rumble men's rumble match here i had fun watching it like hey you know they, they, there are certain things glue me to the screen other things like i'm i'm just kind of following along so this is one of those ones where it's like it was exciting to watch. It was fun. Like the two moments, you know, in there with obviously every moment you go, holy shit, Gunther's still in here. It's been 45 minutes. And then you see him at the end. And the Logan Paul and Ricochet moment was a really cool spot to kind of keep everybody invested in this 30 man Royal Rumble. And then the end where you get to see Cody Rose and Gunther. And I think that's when I said to you, you know, you never know. Like, you would want to see these two people wrestle until you see them facing off in something like this. And I would be like, yo, give me an Iron Man title match of those two. Like, that would be something I, insane. That's how I felt when uh, Gunther and Brock Lesnar came face to face. I was like, oh, I fucking need this match, like, yesterday. Yeah. Like, that's going to be a, like we thought. Oh, that's right. That's my yeah. that that's maybe where I said that to you, but still, Gunther versus Cody one on one would still be would still be a really cool match to see. But Gunther versus Brock Lesnar, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I personally think it's really fucking stupid of them having Cody come in at number thirty because he was not a surprise appearance. They have been announcing he was returning at the Rumble for yeah well over a month or two. And I think it was just really dumb to have him come in last. He could have kind of <laughs> had done more to win, not just have to come in and pick up the scraps at the end. I thought it kind of yeah. fell flat a little bit, in my opinion. Um, happy for him. Happy to see, you know, what goes on at Mania. Uh, but, yeah, just I think number 30 was a stupid spot for him. Uh I think if anyone should have had number 30 spot, it should have been Rollins. Uh, and then kind of came back to that feud a little bit. But yeah, just my two cents there. Um, but I mean, I, I agree. I feel like if they were going to put him at number 30, I thought we were going to see him at like one or two or, you know, in the in the first 10 because they announced he was coming back. Like, if you're going to put somebody at number 30, don't announce he's coming back. Exactly. Like, the trailers that have been playing, you know, leading up to the Royal Rumble should have been enough with Cody's recovery and then let people speculate and stew over it because then they're more likely to watch your pay-per-view. I'm sure there were many people going, ah, you know, Raw, cool, it's going to be the Royal Rumble. Oh, Cody's coming back, don't need to watch it now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So that's uh, that's my two cents as well. Why the fuck can I hear people outside my window with my headphones on? That's interesting. <laughs> it's very annoying. Um, I, I'd people say have to just annoying. have their conversations outside my fucking house. <laughs> yeah, it's not uh, the most the most pleasant, but uh, no. But in any case, we'll move on the, to the match number yeah. two. The match Bray number, Wyatt. 
Hmm? I was going to say match number two is the uh, Bray Wyatt and LA Knight Mountain Dew Pitch Black match. Which yep. was uh, That's stupid as fuck. <laughs> oh, I thought it. I mean, I thought it looked really cool. Yeah, it looked like just a a match uh, with Naomi's entrance the whole time. <laughs> um, you know, it. It. I think, as stupid as it might have been, I feel like something like that was necessary. You know, his that was his first match since he's been back in WWE. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it just makes sense to let Bray Wyatt do his type of setting. The You know, the paint that showed up in the blacklight was, was cool. It was like almost, he was almost trying to show you his inner demon rather than putting a mask on or... You know, all the, the crazy stuff we've seen him do in the past. He's trying to keep all his, everything he's been tied together, but now show it to you right on his skin. So I think that's a really interesting thing they did. I think that to me was the purpose of that, of that match. Somebody with as creative as a mind of, as Bray Wyatt, you know, knows that you, you, you don't want to, try to regurgitate so soon after you've come back and put on the fiend mask, people might lose interest in the fiend, but you go another way where you're so vulnerable and open. And then you do this pitch black match where only your inner demon shows up. I might be getting deep on you, but that's how I feel about it. (laughs) Yeah. I just, I take it totally different way. I think it's totally like a, Third party corporate match, like just sponsoring okay. Mountain Dew, bringing back the pitch black drink. Maybe Bray Wyatt had a little bit of creative say as to what went on, but all in all, it said in the title, it was a Mountain Dew match. <laughs> like it was, yeah. they got a shit ton of money from Mountain Dew to do a weird match that had to do with darkness because the soda is called pitch black. Um, so I'm sure, you know. Bray had some sort of creative say in it, and the the black light paint shit was cool. And then the mask he wore at the end was cool, with like the the red on the face. Yeah. Um. So I did like all that. Um. Uncle Howdy dropping from the fucking top yeah. of whatever the fuck that was. That was kind of ridiculous. I just put a short up tonight actually about that. Um. Because he missed well. him by like a couple feet. Oh um, shit! Really. Yeah, so it was kind of funny <laughs> seeing a different angle where he just like f- flops down and then the <laughs> fucking pyro pops out. Um, but yeah, overall, decent. I mean, that, it's definitely the best place they could have put this match, number second, uh, second uh-huh. on the card, uh, given the other matches we had going on. Um, definitely the right call, putting the Rumble and the main event as far away from each other as humanly possible yeah um but yeah overall it was a match it was intriguing it was more of like comical to me than Mm. scary or i don't know what they were really trying to go for but (laughs) um overall it was it was a thing (laughs) that's pretty much all i have about it it was i guess i guess maybe i try to I, i and i know i try to like read deeply into things you know it could have been as simple as what you said they paid wwe a shit ton of money and said hey we're gonna do this match and that's gonna be that but i don't know It just, to me, like, that's where my mind went. It just felt like it fit the storyline so well. Like, only under a certain type of light can you see my demons. Fair enough. Yeah. And then we had, following that, the Raw Women's Championship match against Bianca Belair and Alexa Bliss. Yes. Um, it's a pretty good match. Um, can't really complain. I just... Uh, I don't know. It was just a standard good women's wrestling match. Nothing really stood out to me. Um, wasn't very intense. It was kind of kind of a slow burn of a match. Mm-hmm. Didn't even go on all too long, but it still felt like a slow burn. 
Um, and you know, you know, Bianca retained. That's uh, pretty much it as far as that one. Yeah, um, I I expected more from Uncle Howdy during that, but right before he, was dead. he just yeah he just dumped himself twelve feet off of a fucking tower. <laughs> so I immediately I went, well, guess Uncle Howdy isn't interfering with this match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Cra- I mean crazy. You know, like, like you said, yeah, it was it was a basic it was a basic wrestling match. There wasn't anything too special in it for me. I definitely expected more. There was definitely more things you could have you could have done there. A hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, hey, it was it did what it had to do. It was decent decent match yep. for what it's worth. All right. Um now we're gonna move into something another uh just like Gunther. Mm-hmm. Um another uh individual in WWE made history in this match. So I'll let you start this one off. You could start kind of giving a summary. I'm going to actually run out for just a second. So I'll be right back. Sounds good. Tony's going to give you the lowdown. Yeah. So we had the uh, 30 women's Royal Rumble match. Uh, So the first competitor out was Rhea Ripley. And now, you know, if you think back just a few short moments ago, what we were talking about in the video about the special moment, um, you know, with Rhea Ripley and what was going on. So Rhea Ripley came out in the number one spot. Liv Morgan came out in the another in the number two spot. Um and, you know, they went at it. And, you know, we've seen some history between uh, Liv and Rhea. I mean, not a terrible amount of history, but enough to give you a good, you know, one, two, let's start this match. Uh, you know, they, they got it kicking off pretty hot, you know? Um, so do, 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 do. I mean, who do we have next? I think we had, who do we have, what was that? Number two. Uh, I know Bailey came in six. Dakota Kai and EO Sky came out uh, not far or at number nine and number ten. So then you had all of Damage Control in the ring at that point. You know, ten ten competitors in the ring, three teaming up on you. Uh, you know, and obviously, you know, uh, Rhea Ripley's not going to get any help uh, from Judgment Day because. They're all men. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. Hey, do you know who came out three, four, and five for this match? Dana Brooke, Emma, and Shayna Baszler. Oh, that's right. I totally drew, drew, drew a blank. Um, and B B Fab was seven, and Roxanne Perez was eight. And then you know now we're now we're up to ten. I kind of skipped a few. My bad, but uh, very good. I skipped like fifteen. <laughs> <The next one. laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, you know. So that was um, you know, it was it was a very good start with both Rhea Ripley and Liv, and then now we got Damage Control plus some others in there, and uh, you know the uh, the Poison or no uh, Natalia came out next, which I don't think. I think that was the first time we've seen Natalia in a while, and uh, mm-hmm. she was she was definitely looking uh, looking good, <laughs> looking dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Natalia. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, it's always good to to see somebody from the Heart Dungeon in the ring. You know, it's always a uh, you know. Leg- legacy. She has a lot of legacy to try to live up to with her father being Jim the Anvil Nineheart, you know. So, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, it was good to see Natalia back. Uh, you know, Candice LeRae, the Poison Pixie, which they've been trying to push a little bit. Um, but then, uh, I mean, 
big time backs in there, Becky Lynch and Asuka soon joined at uh, 15 and 17 to really uh, throw in the mix. And mind you, by this time in the match, opponent number 17, we're more than halfway through, Rhea Ripley is still in it, and she entered number one. Mm-hmm. I mean, so far, you know, we're at number number 17, you know, before we we uh, we get any further, because I know we, we, we like who entered at uh, 18. Um, give me some of your thoughts on it. Well, I'm really, I was really happy to see Asuka back and kind of showing roots to her Japan days before mm-hmm. WWE as, as Kana with the, with the clown paint and showing a little bit more of that aggressive side to Asuka. Um, uh, and yeah, I think Rhea and Liv were in it to the end. Wasn't, uh, wasn't it then? Weren't they the last two? I don't want me to give spoilers. I don't remember if they were the last. I don't remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, let me see. Give me one second. I'll be right back. All right. (laughs) Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, so, but overall, yeah, um, it's good match thus far, but then we move into number 18, which is Piper Niven, uh, formerly known as Dewdrop, who was formerly known as Piper Niven. Um, so it was nice she got her original name back. That was cool. I was really happy to see that. Um, she was doing pretty pretty good. Kind of, you know, she just looked heated, ready to go, uh, full of energy. And she hasn't been in for a little while um, in WWE landscape. And then we got Tamina. Nobody meaner than Tamina, which I couldn't give a toss about. Uh, I know I mentioned my uh, dissatisfaction about seeing number 19 Tamina to you. I was like, of fucking course she's got to be here. She's, gotta, she's never going to get fired. <laughs> Even though she can't do shit, um, in my opinion. Yeah. I do not like Tamina. Anyways, she was in there, number 19. They don't like Tamina either. You hear they don't. Don, Donnie's dogs. They're like, fuck that, Tamina. They they don't they don't they're not the biggest fans. No. And then uh Yeah. Um so, we keep on rolling. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I know you're fine. And then at number twenty, Chelsea Green came back finally. You know, Matt Cardona's wife, Chelsea Green. Um uh, she's ever since she hasn't been in it since 2021. She was doing a lot of stuff yeah. on the indies with, with Matt Cardona, a.k.a. Zack Ryder. Um, but she was eliminated in a new record-setting five seconds. Um, <laughs> first, you know, return after two years, eliminated in five seconds. I think I tweeted it. I don't remember. I know uh, Lib Morgan had the record for either eight or nine seconds being eliminated in the Rumble. So, so Chelsea Green beat that. So, good congratulations to Chelsea for being our probably our jobber of the Rumble, honestly. Probably, yeah. I so, agree with that. Uh, and, you know, Ripley was still going strong. Uh, Michelle McCool ended up coming out at 25. From the and... first row, they brought her. She jumped over the barricade and went, uh, and, and went, went right in. Yeah, that was cool. Um, and then a couple more people before we get to the r- ridiculous now. It was 30. Huh? Our uh, our jobber of the week was in there at number 26 as well. Yeah, Indy Hartwell was in there for a bit. Sonia Deville came in after her, which was, and, you know, she's from Shemong, which is from our home state of Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder, I was. I was going to ask my cousin if he still had his yearbook to see if she uh, graduated with him. So I'm pretty sure they went to the same high school, at least for a period of time. Wait, which one was that? Sonia DeVille. Oh. Yeah. And oh, then Shotzi came out with their little tank, 28. <laughs> Nikki Cross at 29. Like her new, not no longer Nikki ASH. She's yeah. Nikki Cross. And then they fucking this fucking number the queen three. the queen of botches and WWE goes ahead and botches her entrance to the rumble, like before the counter the ten second counter to count number thirty in to zero mm-hmm. her music and graphics were already up, like they 
Of I course, know. if you're going to botch anyone's entrance, you're going to botch the queen of botches, <laughs> Nia Jax. Um, but yeah, she obviously didn't win it. Thank, thank God. Um, yeah, Liv, Liv was the last one. Um, and and uh, Rhea Ripley is going to WrestleMania. Yeah. And she's the first number one spot to ever go, you know, to win the whole thing. And she's also the first Aussie, first Australian to, to win a Rumble. So big congrats to, to Rhea Ripley. That's Absolutely. And that's, serious, that's serious. the, that was the special part of this whole thing that she was, uh, you know, the, the first woman and the first Aussie to go coast to coast in the Royal Rumble. That's, that's yeah. definitely the way to do it. Especially. And now that's her second Royal Rumble win. Yeah. So that was really cool to witness. She definitely deserves it. She puts on the work. She thinks everything she does in the ring look awesome. I think she broke her nose too oh, um, in the, in the rumble. She was in it for so damn long, you know, accidents are prone to happen. Um, but yeah, overall great, great women's rumble. Honestly, great rumble match for, yeah. for the ladies in WWE. I really, I really did enjoy watching that. And, Oh, really because of Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. But, you know, <laughs> because of them going coast to coast, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, final match, you know, main event, main event time. We had the, un, the Undisputed Universal Championship match with Kevin Owens versus champion Roman Reigns. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of madness on this one, especially the ending where everything kind of culminated. Uh, you want to give your thoughts on this? I do. I have many a thoughts, especially on the ending. But let's let's talk about the meat and potatoes of this this shit. It was a uh, it was it was a showing for Roman Reigns. It was another Roman Reigns dominated match in my opinion it was you build up I don't think I'm I was trying to get my thought together so I apologize I don't think you should do what they did to somebody like Kevin Owens even though he may be like one of the best to ever do it but I also feel like he deserves much more you know you build him up up going with this whole Sammy and the bloodline thing and going after Sammy and causing the KO problem and all these chapters and then to have a match where you're mostly you know I mean he he does get some offense in on damage you know on Roman but I felt like he was damaged the most for the longest period Mm -hmm. and you know, you do, you build up, he had, I mean, he had a tag team match with John Cena where he pinned Sammy. Like that should have been more of a fight in my opinion. Yeah. It was kind of a squash for the most part of it. Uh, I feel like it was because it was more storytelling and reasons because they were finally culminating this big thing with Sammy and being best friends with Kevin for years and then joining the bloodline. And kind of turning his back to Kevin Owens. Um, I just touched on a few points of the match. Um, you know, Reigns hit Owens with that low blow and then ordered Sammy to get a chair. And Sammy was like, no, dude, you told me not to interfere in the match. So I'm not interfering. And Reigns was like, go get me that fucking chair. Motherfucker. Like, he was like, mm. you know, they're kind of building it up. Um, eventually... You know, Reigns speared Owens outside, and Owens crawled over to his former best friend, Sami Zayn. Zayn was pleading with Owens to just stay down, take the loss. Like, just uh, he didn't want to witness any more of his former best friend getting his ass beat. Um, so I was <clears throat> more so, I feel like more like this is just a, a one big lesson to Sami Zayn to just like know your place, stay, uh, you know, stay in your role, and you like trying to get him to give up Owens once and for all. Um, but obviously it didn't work like that. Um, which I'm very upset about. 
Yeah, so Zane, uh, you know, the handcuffed Kevin Owens to the ropes, super kicks after super kicks, just k- massive beat down, Solo Sokoa, Usos, and Sami Zayn was obviously, you know, very concerned for his well being. Um, he looked like he was dead. Like, I remember I tweeted, I was like, this is depressing. Like, because I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? Like, are they yeah. really trying to kill Kevin Owens? Um, and then Reigns eventually went to, to hit him with a chair shot to, to own to finish his job. And Zane was like, no, you don't need to do this. Like, you already look at, look at him. He's already done so. Like, leave him alone. Yeah. And Reigns was like, all right. Yeah. And started smacking him in the face. Like, you fucking inter- intervene in my business. Like, how about this? He passed him the chair. How about you hit him with the chair? Yeah. And, and he was like, kept smacking him in the face. Like, more like, you hit him with the chair. And lo and behold... We have the betrayal of the century. Sami Zayn smacks Reigns in the back with the chair. And, you know, this is all. And then he got the shit beat out of him from uh, Jimmy Uso, Solo Sokoa, and Roman Reigns. Um, Jey Uso left. And after being very distraught. But, you know, this is so much. This is bigger than it's bigger than Sami. It goes as far back to Jay. It's like two years ago when yeah. Jay, Jay, before the f- bloodline was really even a thing, you know, he was, it was just Roman and Jay and they had their, their one-on-one match for the title. And, and they had Jay like had three whole, different one-on-ones, right? Yeah. And Jay was screaming, I hate you. I hate you. Like, cause he hated what Roman became and didn't want to join this faction of, you know, that Roman was starting and, because he could tell Roman like was not you know he didn't want like the heel tendencies I guess I don't I don't really know yeah. but uh, it all really stems back to to Jay in the grand scheme of it all it's not really like, Sammy's a huge part of it obviously but um I'm very very interested to see where it goes I I do think they pulled the trigger at the perfect time I think. Elimination Chamber next month would have been too long. I think this was a great, great time to so that way we can have more development at Elimination Chamber. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, the culmination and the climax at WrestleMania. I mean, I could have seen this going on forever, but I understand that's not always going to happen, right? I really enjoyed... I Like, this is the... F- first time really ever that I've actually liked Sami Zayn. (laughs) Like, I don't know. His character always pissed me off, and that's what he was supposed to do. I get it. That's what makes a great heel. But he just just always made me so mad, and I just never wanted to watch him. But this whole bloodline thing, like, gave me new light to Sami. So I hope I, I really, I hope I enjoy Sami for a very long time now, and I hope they don't make him do the shit he did a year and a half ago, you know, yeah, with, so. which was so poor use of him, really, which is probably why I really couldn't stand him. But I love Sami Zayn right now, and I love him with the bloodline. And, you know, he finally wasn't that long ago. He finally got Jay's approval. You know, it was it was that was Survivor Series War Games. You know, it was not that long ago. And to see it end, at least this chapter of it end, is upsetting to me. But my biggest thing was notice how Sammy didn't fight back. There's going to be more to this story. Whether it's Mm -hmm. them a big culmination. As of right now, the way Sammy was acting, I don't see him teaming with Kevin Owens. And going after the bloodline. Like, I don't see that twist. I see Sammy going, you ruined a lot of things for me, but I didn't want to see you die. So I did what I had to do so everybody could just not kill each other. I think that's the way I feel the route with Sammy is going to try to take. Um, But we might still see some. Yeah, I still agree with seeing matches at. Elimination Chamber and WrestleMania and maybe we see some kind of turn in one or the other or we see Jay team up with Sammy like I I don't know 
Well, uh, that's what's hard to tell because of the the Usos. Um, well, Jay, it could be a big swerve. Uh, I'm trying to pull it up right now. Um, oh, is this no longer? Or did he take it down, or it's past the 24 hours? Um, well, he posted on Instagram saying, "I'm out." With the blood drop. And then on his story earlier, mm. he had a picture of him and a picture of Roman. And it said, run it back in the middle. Ooh. So, Ooh. yeah. I think he may have seen Roman's true colors again and maybe snapped out of the whole bloodline thing. But it could be a big swerve. You know, it could be like he could be pretending to side with Sammy and, and just come at him again. Who the fuck knows? I was thinking something. I like Mania or something if they ended up doing um, the Usos versus Owens and Sammy have I don't really know how it would work it would have to be done in a very specific way but essentially having Jay like lay down for Sammy you know like and just saying fuck this mm-hmm. I don't want the bloodline having these titles anymore and like laying down for him mm-hmm. and having him take the titles him and, him and uh, Owens um another coin i really want to see sammy win one of the big ones either the wwe title or i want them to split mm. the fucking things again yeah. and it would just be so nice to see roman's demise on wrestlemania weekend if cody take one of them and sammy take the other one you know that wow. that would be badass too but that would be i would also like to see and i think he deserves it more more as much as i love the usos together i'm really thinking about this storyline which is fucking crazy uh, my mind's just running at a million miles a minute thinking of so many different things but here's here's my final thought for you jay jay leaves doesn't necessarily side with sammy but they're still but they're still close right cuz jay's still mad that maybe he didn't let him in or really try to talk to him before Sammy made that decision to hit Roman with the chair. Um, and we see them build each other up and Jay finally, after so many years, after the start of this bloodline journey and fighting Roman and going through this bloodline. And like you said, snapping out of it and siding with Sammy and having their own thing going and Jay winning the uh is splitting the titles and Jay winning one of them instead of Sammy. Yeah, no, I'd be yeah, that would be amazing too. I would love to see you know, the triple threat at Mania. You know, Jay, Sammy, and Reigns. Probably that probably won't happen though. Um, but maybe Jay versus Roman. Sammy's in Jay's corner. Jimmy's or Solo's in Roman's corner. I don't know. There's just yeah. so many different ways they could do it, and that's. A truly, truly remarkable thing because mm-hmm. usually, at least in, I mean, tr- kudos to Triple H because you know, Vince's WWE was going to shit and this is like really a standout story and it's been going on like it's been a slow, slow burn. Like you won't see this kind of slow burn in AEW very no. often. No, you don't. And which, you know, to, to, each, to each their own with that, you know, I we like, I love AEW for what it is. You know, when I want to see some really cool pro wrestling, I go to AEW. When I want to feel like I'm watching a manly soap opera, I watch WWE. And it mm. makes me feel good. Um, and this, everything about this storyline, it, it's been the main reason why I watch WWE. This storyline, this whole bloodline thing has been really, really cool. And I also absolutely love Roman Reigns as a heel. I think it's some of his best. I feel like it's always easier to act like the bad guy when in real life you're nothing like a bad guy. Mm-hmm. You know, because you, you can have your own imagination of what it's supposed to be. When you're the good guy, you just act yourself. Because humanly, you are the good guy. But that's right. why I love, like, you know, when, when really good people try to act bad it comes out it comes across the screen so well you know so that's another thing that's been making this enjoyable so i mean but that final match of the royal rumble was just an absolute utter brutal beat down to kevin owens at the very end and it it was another necessary evil kind of thing you know 
mm-hmm. uh, where they it had to happen to get to the moment we're at. Now I'm interested to see what unfolds. Yeah. No, I am very, very interested. Um, absolute brutality at the end of that match. You know, Zane got absolutely demolished by that. <laughs> it's a chairs from Roman Reigns, like pounding and pounding, saying, yeah. You broke up the family because Jay walked out. And it's just very interesting to see. I don't know if we're going to see anything on Raw, you know, as the day we're recording this, Monday, January 30th. Uh, Raw is starting in two minutes. Um, <laughs> So we're trying to wrap things up here, but uh, um, I don't know because, you know, mostly Roman usually likes to hang out on SmackDown. And like I touched on before, you have to fucking keep Sammy and Cody as far the fuck away from each other as possible because yeah. that's the worst possible thing ever that if they start booing Cody with the momentum he's gained from the Rumble and coming yeah. back, returning. And if I feel like if they got to pick a face – and someone to dethrone Roman at this very moment in time, they're going to pick Sammy. Like, fuck Cody. Like, I, I truly feel like, you know, because Cody's just coming back. He didn't do anything fabulous. He won the Rumble, number 30, but he didn't right. enter the bloodline, join their family for months on end, and then finally culminate and right. betray a champion of over two years. Like, it's there's levels to it. And I'm just... They need to keep the two separated if they want the the product to really do the best it can. My first intake is they said he's gonna fight Roman at WrestleMania. Oh, it's a given, but he really could have like chose to fight Gunther and put that title back up on a really big pedestal. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's going for the big but one. He's I know, one. I know. I would like what to, if I would Sam, like what to if see Sammy him. won it at Elimination Chamber <laughs> or Jay. <laughs> Imagine that. Fuck. No, I think I think I I do think that Cody's going to be the one to take one belt off of Roman. I don't think both. I don't think no. you got to get rid of this undisputed bullshit. Cody just uh, put on his Instagram story earlier or yesterday a picture of the old winged heavyweight title. Oh wow! So he probably wants to bring that one back. So if he wants to bring that one back, to probably retire the regular WWE championship. I'd be okay with that. I miss that that title was so cool yeah so we will see but yes. again we have to catch raw because we don't want to miss any interesting developments for you guys Absolutely we not. appreciate anyone who stuck with us this far we're a little over 45 minutes in the video uh overall i would give the pay-per-view as a whole with its ups and downs and everything and between a B and a B plus, I'd probably give it. Honestly, I'd give it a B. I'm I, I'll stay solid with the B plus. I may float more towards. Uh... Oh, I did say no. I just said B plus. I don't know what I'm saying. I was originally going to go with a B. <laughs> no, free, listen, I'm just fucked. Um, I was originally going to go with a B, but I think it deserves the the B plus. I definitely. It's like close. I don't know. I get trouble. I get really just giddy over that stuff. So I just tend to like try to put it on a really high thing and be like, "Oh, it was so great!" Even when it like sucked dick for some of it, you know. But yeah. <laughs> no, Overall, listen, no, great was, show. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that that's what really gets me rolling, you know. So yeah, B plus for me. All right. Well, we appreciate. Everyone, like I said, stuck with us for this video. We're going to have some more long-form content coming your way where we discuss a bunch of different topics, wrestling. Um, of course, Jobber of the Week. We got a few in the chamber. We'll be coming at you quick, so make sure you turn on those bell notifications. Don't miss Jobber of the Week. That's our that's our like uh, golden goose egg. Or however Bread the fuck and butter. Say it. Bread and butter. There we go. Bread and butter. I got you. Um, <laughs> Like, subscribe, turn the notifs on. Twitter, always on Twitter. Multiple tweets every single day. TikTok, check out TikTok and our shorts, best wrestling shorts on YouTube. Johnny Rude, final thoughts, Donnie? Um, no, I, I don't have too many. Just uh, it was a, a great rumble. Another one for the books. Uh, like, subscribe, bell. And we're going to go watch Raw now, so... You guys enjoy the rest of your night. We'll catch you next time.